Well, hey, everyone. Good morning, good afternoon, or good evening, whatever is appropriate to you. I appreciate you joining me for this edition of Disaster Hack. In this edition, we're going to talk about emergency medical services, or EMS, and triage. Let's get started. Okay, we have several objectives in our lesson today. We want to understand the types of injuries that may be witnessed in disasters and comprehend who is involved in emergency medical services, as well as their goals. We need to anticipate common problems that we may encounter. This lesson will hopefully help you define triage and recognize its importance. And then hopefully you'll become familiar with field hospitals and disaster medical assistance teams as well. Of course, it's pretty obvious that disasters may create substantial numbers of victims and injuries. Let me provide some statistics and some examples. Dennis Maletti, in his very important work, Disasters by Design, reveals that about 50,000 people are injured in disasters in the United States each decade. The Northridge earthquake produced between 8 and 11,000 injuries, and the Haiti earthquake produced an amazing or astonishing and depressing number, 250,000. So injuries can be very serious in disaster situations. The terrorist attacks on 9-11 reveal the type of injuries that may occur in disaster situations. These range from burns and broken bones to problems with breathing or severe bleeding associated with impalement. There are many factors that determine the number, type, and severity of injuries, the type of hazard and the magnitude of the hazard, the location of the person at the time of the disaster, whether the person was in a protective structure or not, their age and health status, and their knowledge of what to do in times of disasters. When we think about injuries, we often reflect on disaster victims, but we need to be aware first responders can be injured too. They can be injured in vehicle accidents, when they're working in floodwaters, when they're putting out fires, when they're walking through sharp twisted debris. They can experience back injuries as well or be harmed by hazardous materials. Therefore, medical treatment may be needed for victims and even responders alike. And this may come from untrained emergent groups, emergency medical technicians or paramedics who have more advanced training, and their goal is really twofold, stabilize the victim and then transport the patient for additional care. There are often many common problems that may be encountered when emergency medical services are being provided. Many of these were visible in the Hyatt Skywalk collapse. For instance, communication was problematic. There were delayed ambulance reaction times. There was a lack of medical supplies, some of the life flight helicopters were withdrawn prematurely, and the distribution of patients to hospitals was uneven. Another expectation is that there will be various waves of victims that may be encountered. Some of them will be initial victims from the disaster itself. They'll be transported by volunteers or family members. They'll be self-referred or brought in by emergency medical services, but there'll be another wave of people who are injured as they respond. This includes volunteers, first responders, and recovery personnel. As mentioned, there could be large numbers of disaster victims, and this could overwhelm emergency medical personnel. Triage may be needed. Triage is the assessment and categorization of victims based on the severity of their injuries. Triage presents a moral and an ethical dilemma for those involved. EMTs, paramedics, nurses, and doctors have to determine who to treat first. They'll look at the condition of each individual patient and then separate the patients. They'll categorize them in terms of those who need treatment immediately and those who can have treatment later. This is not optimal, but in a disaster situation, it's a must because there are so many demands. Because of excessive demands, you may also need to establish a field hospital. This can provide additional and more advanced treatment and even basic surgeries near the scene of a disaster. 
Eventually, however, victims will need to be sent to hospitals for further care and treatment, and hospitals need to learn from prior experience. For instance, they need to ensure that the number of victims is distributed equally or equitably across all different institutions so no one is overwhelmed. In addition, they must make sure that victims are decontaminated so that hospital personnel will not be exposed to hazardous chemicals. They need to cancel elective surgeries and call up additional personnel and ensure the scheduling is adequate for the disaster conditions. Another idea is to seek outside assistance when the number of victims outpaces the available resources. Cities, counties, and states can seek federal help from disaster medical assistance teams, or DMORTs. DMORTs were created in 1995, and they're part of the National Disaster Medical System. There's currently 80 teams with a total of 7,000 personnel. This personnel includes doctors, nurses, and paramedics, and others who can help increase capacities and capabilities during a major disaster situation. Well, we've reached the end of the presentation, and I just realized that I didn't address a very significant problem, and that is the low pay of our EMTs and paramedics. Many of them could make more at McDonald's, in fast food, or working in retail stores, and many of them are leaving the profession as a result. This is a significant challenge, and it doesn't bode well for the future of emergency management or our responses to disasters it has to be addressed. But let me also summarize some of the other key lessons of this presentation. We obviously know disasters produce a large number of injuries. We need our EMTs and paramedics to provide treatment. They may have to implement triage to figure out who needs treatment first. It's also very important that we anticipate resource needs, that we coordinate with hospitals, and that we work with DMATs as required. For more information, I would refer you to some very helpful articles that I've listed here. I hope this video has provided some useful information about emergency medical services in disasters. Best of wishes.